Hello, and welcome to our Eduro Learning video series, Coaching Fundamentals. In this series, we'll hear from 12 experienced instructional coaches from around the world on topics like how do you define the role of a coach and what are your best strategies in a coaching conversation. My name is Kim Cofino, and I will be your host throughout the series. I've been really fortunate to be an instructional coach in schools around the world for the last almost 20 years, and I've learned a ton from these conversations, so I am super excited to share them with you. If you like this format, hearing from lots of different perspectives on a single topic, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel to get all 12 videos in the series. Turn on notifications to find out when we're live on YouTube and to be the first to see the next installment. Have questions about instructional coaching or would you like to see a specific video series related to anything about education and technology? Leave us a comment below and let us know. Want to see even more instructional coaching resources after you've watched this series? Head on over to our website to check out our free resources, more videos, and online courses about teaching and learning and coaching in the digital world. Today's video is all about the challenges that coaches face. And we all know that coaching can be a super fun and dynamic and engaging job, but it's also really challenging. So today our coaches will talk about some of the biggest challenges that they faced in their coaching role and how they overcame those challenges. Hopefully there will be some good tips and advice and strategies here for you in your role as a coach. Um, <clears throat> I would say my biggest challenge uh, in the coaching role, uh, and I think this is true of a lot of roles in schools, is that you need to remember that a school is not about your independent pace. Um, it, it's really about that collective pace uh, and, and not trying to push because you think, oh, this is the next point in the timeline. Uh, you know, that, that timeline, you really need to not be so zoomed in on your own, but you know, you, you kind of need to just zoom way back out and remember that it, it's not about your pace. It's about the school. I think my biggest challenge is I'm going to talk about two of them. One of them is access. Um, how do you get access to teachers? How do you get access to teams? How do you get access to students um, to help them and to help promote and to help encourage, uh, you know, the, the behaviors and the skills that, that we think are really important? Um, you know, a lot of that depends on how the school is structured and what sort of collaborative planning times might be in place um, and how willing those teachers are to use those collaborative planning times in order to uh, to be able to to use that effectively for planning, you know, technology enhanced learning experiences or whatever your school is is calling those things. I think the other thing that has been a challenge is, um, let's say, authenticity. Because once you become a coach and you no longer have a classroom of your own or that you're seen as the expert and like, oh, well, of course you can do it because that's your job. How do you maintain that authenticity and relevance to the everyday classroom teacher? And how do you remain empathetic to all of the things that they have to do that sometimes you forget that you don't have to do? I'm very, very aware, for example, during report time. I know that they have so much stress. The classroom teachers have so much stress on them. I am not going to add to that stress. Um, and so, you know, how that, I think that kind of empathy piece of the everyday teacher and, and helping them remember that you are a teacher. That's why you're in this role. You weren't hired fresh out of university or out of, you know, industry and have never been a classroom teacher. Um, but I also know that the everyday stresses and strains and how do I help maybe remove some of that stress rather than add to some of that stress. I think my biggest challenge was going from classroom teacher to coach actually, because when you haven't prepared for it, and especially in my situation, it wasn't, um, okay, so I had wanted to become a coach that year when I got the job, but my vision was, okay, so I'll, I'll maybe try for it in like five years where I can give myself time to like go to PD, learn a little bit more about how to be a coach, and then boom, it landed in my lap. So I went from zero to here it is, and I had very little understanding of how to approach it. So the biggest challenge really was what finding the definition of what a coach was for me and working that out on the job itself and doing all the trial and error, what's gonna work, what's not gonna work, and yeah, I mean, there were definitely slip ups that first year. But um, yeah, my first year was it was a struggle. The reality is, um, 
there's always people who are reluctant. Um, and that doesn't bother me. If, if a person's issue is that they don't, they don't feel comfortable with technology, I don't mind that. Like, that's totally okay. What I don't like is a sense of helplessness. When the person just can't be bothered, that really irritates me. Like, that sets me off. Like, as a person who really is a lifelong learner, I find that really difficult. Like, it's like, I don't know why you just give up and not try. Like, I would never do that. But that's where, again, I have to go back to the idea of, like, other people are different. And maybe there's some reason why that person is helpless. And I just got to try my best to, like, to suck it up and put on the smiley face and say, okay, I will help you with that. Yes, <laughs> I, I'm going to be doing it for you, but that's okay. I'm going to show you how. Um, one thing I have started doing, though, is, and I insist on this now, is I will computer. I will I will sit on your shoulder and tell you where to point your where to point stuff, how to move your mouse, but I will not touch it anymore. I stopped doing that. I can't. <laughs> I think for me the biggest challenge in the coaching role I've found is that some people think coaching is just for the people that can't do anything and they need extra support. So seeing coaching not as remedial work for losers, but but something that's like innovative and exciting and, and something that's possible for anyone. I mean, I've just been really enjoying watching the Winter Olympics at the moment. And even the people at the top of their game have a coach. So coaching for me is for everyone, but it's hopefully seeing that perception change from quick going to that person's room because they're really not doing a good job and you need to fix it. Um, it's changing that perception to, um, wow, let's, let's everybody work collaboratively together to, to improve learning for students. Um, I think my biggest challenge in a coaching role is not watering rocks. Um, and what I mean by that is there are some people who are like just fighting against you or fighting against the ideas or and sometimes you just don't water those rocks. Um, and also, I guess along with that, they might feel like they don't have anything to learn. Like, ah, you know, I know technology or I know this or I and they they sort of isolate themselves. So that has been a challenge to try to get to those people. Um, and I have ways around that, but that's definitely been a challenge. I mean, coaching is challenging in lots of ways. And, um, you know, the one I'm sure most people would bring up is um, how do you deal with, you know, the early adopters all the way to the people who, well, the people who have no interest at all, you just kind of leave them be. But, you know, uh, is people who are reluctant to be coached and and I kind of understand, you know, like, whoa, I've been doing this for 20 years. The kids love it. It works like a charm. I cover every single standard. So how about you just make sure the iPads turn on and off and I'll do my thing. So how do you crack that nut? Um, that's a big challenge. Um, but then certainly this advocacy inquiry sort of thing it, it's such a it's such a strong urge to and i think it's practice it's such a strong urge to give someone a great idea you know what we could do you know what you could do with this unit and rather than you know what are the outcomes you'd like to see and how do you see kids managing finding a way to that and and really helping them to ask themselves questions that's a that's a tough part of it as well yeah and then there's other things, you know, um, like uh, the school I'm at and many people, everyone's in different schools, you know, are in different places along this continuum of what, what inquiry-based learning is, what the role of technology in inquiry-based learning is. And sometimes it can be difficult when your mind's galloping with ideas and people aren't ready for them, you know, or even the school isn't ready for it, perhaps. And, hey, guys, how about, you know, we do this? And it was like, oh, um, that can be challenging. It can be deflating, you know, like so you've got to slow down. But that's, that's uh, some advice for a new teacher. So I'll keep that for later. Okay. I think my biggest challenge in a coaching role is defining that line between coaching and consulting when uh and having other people come to grips with that as well be and, and i think to have people see you as a coach that can provide both roles and uh, support people in multiple ways i think in schools coaches are often handed extra jobs 
that because they are not in a classroom, maybe they don't have um, teaching load. So they can take on things. And I, and I do see coaches as people who provide professional development opportunities, um, as well as program rollout and development. But I think it's that going back and forth between the roles. And if you are up in front doing program rollout and you're telling people this is how we're doing X, even if you did involve people along the way, ultimately you are the voice of here's how, here's how we're moving forward. And then stepping in back into more of a coach role with an individual who's working on some goals and you're doing the, the questioning and the paraphrasing and you're getting, you're pulling from within the person and helping them to think about multiple ways of attacking their problem, um, going in and out between those roles and getting other people to understand that there are multiple roles that you play, I think is a challenge. I think one of my biggest challenges is something I didn't realize at first. I think it took me a while. And that is when, when to just pause and listen and not immediately jump to an answer. Because I felt like I wanted to be helpful I wanted to build relationships with people. I wanted to give them what they wanted and what I thought they needed. Um, and so I, I, was, I was basically trying to solve everybody's problems without helping them to solve their own problems. And isn't that really the goal? So for me personally, beginning, um, it's that coaching versus consulting um, difference. You know, and, and I'm like a very solution-oriented person. And so when someone comes to me, I immediately try and solve their problem and I jump to like, well, you should try this, this, and this, and this. Um, and so it's, it's been a challenge for me to really slow down and just work on, you know, I call it like supreme listening skills. And I find the more I've coached, the less I actually talk and the more I listen. And, you know, what, what, what actually sort of helped me understand that is, is um, working with people who are really um, skilled in cognitive coaching. I think that's something, that's an area that I really want to grow in uh, just because there's little moves you can use when you get the training that, that really help. And, and if you, you know, I've watched a lot of cognitive coaching conversations and, and what it really does is it forces people to sort of confront their own assumptions. And, and sometimes we kind of, you know, we make excuses for ourselves and, you know, we all do it, right? But the way cognitive coaching, if it's done really well, it kind of forces you to confront those excuses you may be making or even assumptions that you're operating on that may not be you know valid um the biggest challenge for me and for our tech coaches is time so time to meet people um and that challenge varies across the different divisions of the school so in um the elementary school we we have tried to get tech coaches into each grade level and we have um five grade levels with tech coaches in at the moment, and I actually coach the other grades. Um, in that situation, the tech coach attends all of the planning meetings, so is always there with the lens of technology whenever they are planning um, what they're going to do in their units of inquiry. Now, it's a different situation in middle and high school. So we have tech coaches who are coaching in their subject and in their grade, and some who are coaching subjects in grades that they really don't have much connection with. And the issue for them is not being able to be there in the planning meetings because they're teaching at that time themselves. And then having to meet with people after the school day or maybe before the school day, which is a sap on the time of the coaches, but also in some cases a bit of an imposition or an add-on to the teachers who may actually be questioning why they're having to meet extra with someone before or after school, especially someone who doesn't really work with them. So being able to build time into the school week, perhaps during staff meeting times or some other time, would be really super um, to move forward with coaching here. Um, one of the biggest challenges, I think, in being a coach is figuring out Where's the best place to put your time and energy? Because there's so many things we can be supporting, helping with, um, doing in a role as a coach. 
that we um, really have to, even if we have a pretty defined role, which can vary from situation to situation, is how do we get the best, the most impact from the time, the resources, and the energy that we have. It's great to hear from so many experienced coaches how they have challenges in their role too. It's not always easy and fun to be a coach, but there's lots of learning ahead. So hopefully you enjoyed today's video and got some ideas and insight into what it's really like in being a coach on an everyday basis. If you enjoyed today's video, please head over to our website at edurolearning.com to check out even more resources for coaching and teaching and parenting in the digital age. See you there.